Hey, welcome to the Interaxis YouTube channel and Interaxis.io. Uh, today we're going to talk about Nexus Mutual. Nexus Mutual is a, uh, an aim at a decentralized insurance uh, company that is available on, on the blockchain. And the idea of Nexus Mutual and, and what they're trying to solve is uh, in insurance companies uh, essentially worldwide, um, there, there's this number floating out there that about 35% of the uh, costs of the premiums and, and everything that we pay into insurance companies gets spent by the insurance companies for their own expenses, right? That it doesn't get issued back to policyholders at any point for, for claims or anything. And the, the aim of Nexus Mutual is to use blockchain technology to try to cut out about 17 or 18 percent of, of those costs, which uh, doesn't seem like a, a big deal, but that translates into billions and billions of dollars. And if we can save that, make it decentralized and, and fair for everybody, then this is a good system. So let's delve into uh, Nexus Mutual and how it works a little bit. But before that, we have to identify how the traditional insurance market works. Insurance, by definition, is essentially a pooling of risk. So it's a bunch of people that have some sort of risk that, that there's a, a low chance of it happening, but if it happens to me, it's a big financial impact. Uh, some examples of this are if 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 there's some sort of storm or, or a fire at my house or I get in a car accident or something, that can have a huge financial impact on me, but there's a pretty low chance of it happening. So what do I do? I offload my risk into this pool with other people who have this, who have a similar risk, and if it so happens that one or two or, or several of us uh, have a claim against that risk, there's plenty of money in the pool to, to pay us out and make us whole. That's the idea of insurance. So here's how it works. So you might have an insurance company, okay, and, and their risk might be something like my car. We'll say we're, we're going to insure my car. Okay, so the, the insurance company is here, and I say I'm going to pay a premium for my auto insurance. Okay, so I pay a premium, and, and we'll call that premium thousand dollars a year to, to cover my car. Now the insurance company to arrive at that premium they look at things like my age, the type of car I have, my uh, zip code where I live, my credit, uh, any claims I've had in the past, so my driving history, okay, and they evaluate all those things and they, they plug them in some algorithms and they say Adam, here's how much you're paying. You're paying us $1,000 a year to, to cover your car. So my $1,000 goes in there. Hopefully I, I don't have any claims for a while, but the, when the need arises and I, and I have a claim, right, they, they then have to assess whether or not the, the claim is valid. right? So I, let's say, got in a car wreck uh, and someone else's car is damaged. They, have, they, they then outsource to a claims adjuster The uh, role of going out and looking at the car, assessing was it my fault. They look at things like police reports, if possible. They look at the at the car of whoever I was in an accident with. They try to assess how much that will cost. They they talk to the, the body shop or the mechanic, whoever is going to fix the car. Uh, they they look at my policy. They say were, were you at fault? Were you covered? Did you actually pay your premium? All these other things. And when all that's okay, the claims adjuster tells the insurance company, all right, you got to pay the money. And if and if this other car is going to cost, say, $5,000 to fix, the insurance company pays out $5,000 to whoever it was that I injured or, or hurt their car or whatever in the process, comes out of here, and from now on, that history now goes against me, and from here on out, my premium might go up to $1,500, right? Because they can assess that about me, that apparently I'm a poor enough driver that now my premium has to go up because the cost, the risk that they have of me is higher. Now, all this money that I pay in premiums goes potentially into this pool of money with everyone else who's, who's paying auto premiums, okay? Now, the insurance company has to keep some level of reserve here because what they have to assess at any one point is what is the percent chance that there's any sort of claim activity, right? And they have to make sure that they have enough cash available to, to pay claims like this at any time. 
beyond the reserve, they can take that money and invest it. Now, they might not want to be overly risky with that money, but they can go invest that money. Okay, they can go invest in stocks, bonds, uh, other, other types of equity. They can do, vent some of them do venture capital, some of them buy real estate, whatever they, they need to do, but they can go invest this money, but they have to make sure they're keeping this reserve. So once they pay out you know, th this little claim here, then they have to make sure that that money gets replaced in the reserve. Okay, now most of this here is all kind of under the purview of the insurance company, whatever company that might be. They might outsource to, they might have outsourced claims adjusters, they might have their own claims adjusters, they might outsource some of the data collection, they might outsource the premium collection, they might outsource the investment management, okay, but this is all kind of under their purview. They get the database, they get to keep track of everything. This is obviously uh, very centralized, but it's something that we've come to um, just kind of be okay with because we're outsourcing all that trust and risk and the management of this pool and everything to this insurance company. And we're saying, look, we're, we're okay paying it to you. You handle all this. You keep track of the, the numbers and, and the, the money and the data flow and the percentage and, and the claims history and everything else. We're going to outsource all that to you. Okay, and that's what the insurance company does. Now, there's a difference between a mutual and a stock company. A mutual insurance company is one that's actually owned by its policyholders. So if this happens to be a mutual company, like a uh, Northwestern Mutual, for instance, Liberty Mutual, by virtue of the fact that I've paid a premium, I am now a, a part owner of the company. So as they make money potentially on their investments every year, and as they maybe have more in reserve than they need, they've taken in more premiums than the claims they've paid out, they might pay some sort of profit to me as a mutual, as an owner of the company. Companies that are stock companies, actually, they, they are owned by stockholders. So the same thing might be paid out in terms of dividends to the owners of the company. So that's how traditional insurance has always worked. Now you can see that within here, the, the, the management of, of the premium payments, of all this data, of the claims adjusters, of handling all this, there's a lot of money there, right? Because there's a lot of people in here, there's buildings, there's software, uh, there's, there's paying of commissions, there's paying of a, of a network of distribution, um, and, and then of course there's paying claims. So there's a lot of money that goes out and, and is spent other than just paying these claims. All right, so here's what Nexus Mutual is, is attempting to solve. Okay, for the time being, we're going to go over here and go to the, the DeFi slash Nexus Mutual way that we're doing this. Okay, what Nexus Mutual is doing is saying, look, cur currently um, the only thing they're, they're insuring right now that I'm aware of is smart contracts. Right, so they, they have this smart contract coverage. So if I have a loan, for instance, if I have a... Uh, We'll call it a, a 500, not 500 dollar, 500 die uh, loan into, we'll call it the, the compound pool. Right. Now, as, as I talked earlier from a, a, a uh, video about risk, my risk here is compound is a smart contract, right? The compound lending pool is a smart contract. Smart contract code can essentially have flaws in it, it could have faults, it could be hacked, whatever it might be. And, and I want to ensure, I might want to ensure that my 500 die that's in there, that's earning me 6 or 7%, is insured. So if someone were to hack this or someone were to find a flaw and be able to take my die out of this smart contract, I want to be kind of made whole. So what I found out is I can, I can buy a, a smart contract coverage insurance uh, piece from Nexus Mutual, and it costs me uh, for for to cover this 500 die. It costs me about 3.2 die, which I paid. Okay. Now in the next 180 days, if something happens and, and Compound somehow gets gets hacked, someone finds a flaw in the smart contract code, whatever it might be, I will and, and I file a claim. I will receive my 500 die, assuming the, the claim is, is validated. I will receive 500 die back uh, from, the, from this pool. Not from Nexus Mutual exactly, but from the pool I will receive 500 die. So how does this all work? And how have they found the ability to do this? So my 3.2 die goes into here, into this pool, 
and, and forgive me guys at, at Nexus Mutual if we don't get this exactly correct from a technical perspective, but we're trying to explain how, how it's all possible and why it's even important, right? So what, what they've done is they have been, been able to outsource a lot of these um, a, a lot of these roles here, outsource it to people by finding the incentives to allow them to operate and, and help out with the system, and, and they have to give them some sort of incentive. And that incentive, as we've seen with Bitcoin and everything else, is usually some sort of cryptocurrency, right? So I can go buy, I can be a member, right? And I can buy Nexus Mutual tokens, and I can decide to be a risk assessor. A risk assessor means I go look at potentially the compound smart contract, and I go, look, I think there's a really well-written smart contract. I don't think anyone's going to bust it up. I don't think anyone's going to find a flaw in it. I'm going to I'm going to wager, or I'm I'm going to risk, or, or I'm going to uh, stake ten Nexus Mutual tokens on this particular smart contract, right? And there might be several people staking their Nexus Mutual tokens in here. So, so the the ten uh, NXM are kind of in this pool. And as long as this does not, as long as this smart contract does not get exposed or hacked or anything else, over a certain number of days, I continually get my 10 Nexus Mutual tokens back, plus a piece of the fees that are collected, a, a piece of this premium that's collected. So I get, I can benefit. So maybe, and, and I don't know if the math is exactly right, but over a period of time, I might get 11 Nexus Mutual tokens in return. So I've made some money by virtue of the fact that I've staked part of my money on the fact that I think this is a good smart contract. And because there are plenty of people like me staking, there are more people that have invested their money, have put their money in this loan that go, look, I'm willing to buy insurance. I'm willing to pay a premium for insurance on this because there are enough people out here that have staked some money on the fact that this is a good smart contract. So it's not Nexus Mutual telling them it's a good smart contract. It's not Compound telling them it is. It's some third party on the outside that has said, I'm going to stake my money on it so much so that if for some reason this is hacked or, or, or there's a flaw that's exposed, I would lose my 10 NXM tokens. So what, what this does is there's this, there are these potentially independent third parties that have actually put their money behind this and said, we think this is good. We're not affiliated with Nexus Mutual. We're not affiliated with Compound. But we've staked our money on the fact that this is a, a good token. Now, if there is a claim, if this is hacked, if someone gets into the smart contract, not if someone gets into my, my particular wallet or, or I expose my private keys or something, but if someone actually does get into the compound smart contract, now you have a whole other system o over here, which is the claims people. So I, I or, or we'll say Ron, so, so that there's someone else. So Ron might take his 10... Nexus Mutual tokens and say, I'm going to be part of the claims process. And I, I've, you know, potentially filed a claim. I've said, hey, someone swiped my 500 uh, die from my account, sent them to their own wallet. I file a claim. Ron and, and several other claims assessors might come in here and go, look, we're going to take our money and, and we're going to evaluate this. And if it's true that someone did break into this and this is a valid claim, we're going to throw our 10 Nexus Mutual tokens in there. And that's how strongly we feel about this. So Ron says, yes, this, this is a valid claim. You need to pay Adam and everyone else out their, their 500 die that they paid the insurance premium for. So because he did that, I can feel pretty comfortable that he has the incentive to, to give the right response, right, to, to be truthful. So this is an, another independent third party, where over here you had claims adjusters that might work for the insurance company or, or might work separately uh, for, or, uh, for a separate contractor. Here is a totally independent person that is incented to do the right thing, because if Ron says, yes, this is a valid claim, and there's a vote on it, by the way, there's everyone else here who, who has Nexus Mutual tokens and, and is assessing this claim as voting. And if the vote is against Ron, if it's 70-30 against him, he loses his tokens. So he does not have the incentive to, to uh, validate this claim for me if it's not truthful, right? So the, the point here is that hopefully Nexus Mutual has created this system whereby everyone can get incentives for different parts of the process, right? 
I have the incentive because I, I say, look, it doesn't cost me a whole lot of die to insure this 500 die loan. Someone else can say, look, it, it, I'm willing to stake my Nexus Mutual tokens, which hopefully have some value to them, on the fact that I think Compound is a good um, smart contract that people should put their money into. Ron might go, look, I think this is a valid claim. I'm going to stake my Nexus Mutual tokens, and if I'm right and 70% of the people agree with me, then I get that back plus a, a little bit of fee. So the idea here and the importance is Nexus Mutual potentially has created this incentive system, which is the basis of so much cryptocurrency now. What's, what's become so important with it is it's created this incentive system that everyone can have their little piece. So eventually what you'll have is you, you probably will have people that will just be risk assessors or just use their money to invest in being risk assessors for Nexus Mutual and, and potentially other insurance type products. You'll have people that will just be claims assessors because they can make some money at that. You'll have people that will just actually take, you know, whatever's left over here, they're going to have some that is a reserve, right, and some that's available for investment. So you'll have investment managers that are actually managing some of this that's above and beyond the reserve. You will have whole, whole new companies or, or, or individuals or whatever uh, coming out that are able to uh, invest their money and, and make more in certain ways that aren't available right now because it's all wrapped up in the insurance company. All right, so hopefully this is what Nexus Mutual has created and it's a very decentralized way to handle insurance or the pooling of risk. So that is uh, kind of a somewhat of a basic description of what Nexus Mutual has created and, and what is probably partly the, the basis for where we're going with some decentralized insurance using a voting system, that's important, a voting system for uh, claims assessment. Um, but, but the key again here is the incentive system that's being built to try to, to incent people to act in the correct, in the valid, in the truthful way. So again, that's... Uh, our take on Nexus Mutual, I think, is pretty important. I've I've actually um, bought uh, coverage for a, a contract I have. I'm seeing how it works. I've actually uh, staked some of my tokens for a risk assessment. So uh, I'll probably be back at some point and tell you how that worked out. Um, hope you like the video. Subscribe to the YouTube channel. Interaxis.io is the website. Uh, hit us on Twitter at Interaxis8, number 8, and we'll see you at the next video.